Hello, and thank you so much for joining Art Jetter 2022 Medicare 101 training. Today, I'm going to go high level on all the features that make up Medicare. My name is Kristen Burke, and I am the National Marketing Coordinator here within the company. Feel free to contact any of our senior health marketing specialists at any time at 800-228-0008 or at jetter.com. Now let's first look at Medicare. It's a social insurance program established in 1965. It provides health coverage to more than 62 million people. The majority of the clients that you'll work with will be the individuals that are 65 and over. There are nearly 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 each and every day. So a huge sales opportunity there. You may also work with individuals that are under age 65. People who are disabled automatically get Part A and Part B after getting disability benefits from Social Security for 24 months. There are also the individuals that have ALS. They will automatically get Part A and Part B the month Social Security disability begins. Also people who have permanent kidney failure. Now you might wonder what makes up all the different parts of Medicare. So the social insurance program that started in 1965 is the traditional Medicare component or sometimes known as original Medicare. What makes up those pieces are the Part A hospital insurance or Part B medical insurance. We'll talk about those in a little bit more depth in just a moment. Then they also have the Part C of Medicare, which is the Medicare Advantage plans, as it's an alternative to traditional Medicare. So as you can see in this chart, it is not linked to traditional Medicare. As I said, it's an tr alternative to traditional Medicare. And then lastly, there's the Part D of Medicare, which is the prescription drug coverage. Now let's look more specifically at the Part A of Medicare. It is premium free when the beneficiary or spouse have 10 years or more of Medicare covered employment. If receiving Social Security retirement income, the beneficiary automatically is enrolled in the Part A of Medicare. Now you may have individuals that have less than 10 years of Medicare covered employment. They can still get the Part A, they will just need to pay a premium for that. Now looking at Part A coverage, this is going to be all centered around hospital, uh, facility, uh, those types of expenses. That's where the Part A kicks in. But keep in mind, there are out-of-pocket costs that are associated with an individual when they have Part A of Medicare. Uh, these costs do change each year. So if someone just has Medicare Part A and they are hospitalized, they will first have to pay uh, a deductible of $1,556. Then Medicare will cover the first 60 days of their hospital stay. If they're still in the hospital come the 64th through the 90th day, they're going to pay out $389 per day. If they're still hospitalized after the 91st day, then they'll start being charged $778 per day. If they are still hospitalized after the 150th day, they will have to pay for all of those expenses. Now there's the skilled nursing care as well. Medicare picks up the first 20 days of skilled nursing. However, come day 21 through 100, the individual is responsible for paying $194.50 per day. After the 100th day, the individual has to pay for all of those expenses. Medicare does pay for hospice care. There is a copay of $5 per outpatient prescription and a 5% for the Medicare approved amount for inpatient respite care that the individual would be responsible for. Also, the individual would be responsible for the first three pints of blood. Now let's look at the Part B of Medicare. Individuals will need to pay a monthly premium for Part B. Now the standard Medicare Part B monthly premium for 2022 is 170.10. If you have higher income beneficiaries earning more than 91,000, they will pay that 170.10 plus an additional amount. And that's all based around the income related monthly adjustment amount. And we can get you that information. Uh, there is a chart with all that data. Also keep in mind that there is a late penalty uh, fee. So if you don't sign up for Part B when you're first eligible, 
you may have to pay a late enrollment penalty for as long as you have Medicare. Your monthly premium for Part B may go up 10% for each full 12 month period that you do not have either credible coverage or Part B. So make sure that your clients are aware of this. So Part B does cover anything that's out of the hospital or facility. So doctor services, outpatient care, preventative services, diagnostic tests, some therapies, durable medical equipment. So that's kind of where all of those uh, expenses would fall. So in addition to the monthly premium that you'll pay for the Part B, there are some additional out-of-pocket costs that the client needs to be aware of. So there's an annual deductible, and for 2022, that amount is 233. So once that annual deductible is satisfied, then the individual will pay a 20% coinsurance for most services. So these figures uh, can change as well each year. Now that we have covered the Parts A and Parts B of Original Medicare, let's look at Medicare Advantage, which is Part C. And it must cover at least what Original Medicare covers and in a sense replaces Original Medicare. However, the individual will still need to pay the Part B premium. Majority of the plans are zero premium plans, and there is a maximum out-of-pocket costs associated with the plans. You can only enroll or switch during certain times of the year, and they are network-based plans, either an HMO or a PPO. So make sure that the client looks to see if their a provider, a hospital, falls into the network plan that they are uh, looking to enroll in. For many who are not receiving Social Security benefits when they turn 65 and therefore are not automatically enrolled in Medicare's Part A and B, they can enroll during the initial election period, three months before the month in which you turn 65, the actual month of your 65th birthday, or up to three months after your 65th birthday. This initial election period also pertains to Medicare Advantage and Part D prescription drug coverage. If the Medicare beneficiary has credible coverage at age 65, he can defer the Part B enrollment and enroll when losing that credible coverage in the future. Once the employment or credible coverage based on current employment ends, whichever happens first, you have eight months to sign up for Part B without a penalty. This period will run whether or not you choose COBRA. If you choose COBRA, don't wait until your COBRA ends to enroll in the Part B. If one does not apply for a Medicare Part B when first eligible or qualify for a special enrollment opportunity, he can only enroll during the general enrollment period, January 1st through March 31st of each year, with coverage effective July 1st. Now looking at the Part D, prescription drug plans. They are offered by private insurance carriers for a premium. They have different tiered drug plans and co-pays. You can either have it a standalone prescription drug plan or combined with a Medicare Advantage plan. Keep in mind that there is a late enrollment penalty associated with the prescription drug plans, and Medicare calculates a penalty by multiplying 1% of the national base beneficiary premium times the number of full uncovered months you don't have Part D or credible coverage. The monthly premium is rounded to the nearest 10 cents and is added to your monthly Part D premium. Now looking at Medicare supplement plans. So as you remember and recall in the, the past slides, we talked about the copays and deductibles of the Part A and B of Medicare. So Medicare supplements covers those gaps in Medicare, those deductibles, coinsurance, copayments. So these amounts do change each year, as I mentioned, and the supplement plan will cover those new amounts as well. Medicare alone, just the Part A and Part B, covers less than half of the beneficiary's total costs. So having a Medicare supplement plan with original Medicare is key. Medicare supplement plans are guaranteed renewable, so as long as you pay your premiums, they can cancel your coverage. Also keep in mind, Medicare supplement plans are very flexible. You can see any provider that accepts Medicare, so no referrals are needed. So this is great for individuals that travel, snowbirds, uh, just gives you that peace of mind that you can see any provider anywhere in the country that accepts Medicare. 
Back in 2020, there were some changes that were implemented on the Medicare Settlement Plans. They enacted the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act of 2015, or otherwise known as the Dr. Fix. With this uh, change, Medicare Settlement Plans can no longer pay the Part B deductible for newly eligible beneficiaries as of January 1st of 2020. So kind of getting into a little bit more details on that. So as of January 1st, Medicare Supplement Plans CNF are no longer available to newly eligible beneficiaries because plans CNF, again, cover that Part B deductible. So if anyone that's turning 65 after January 1st of 2020, those plans are not available to them. Now, if you have a client that was eligible prior to uh, January 1st of 2020, they will still have access and the ability to purchase plans C and F. So just keep that in mind. If you have further questions on that, let us know. Here is a chart of the Medicare supplement plans that could potentially be offered and available in your state by the various carriers. So you'll just need to check with the carriers and uh, the state to see what plans they are currently offering. The check mark indicates that plan will cover those benefits. So the plan G is the most popular and we are seeing an increase in plan N sales. We are still seeing some sales with um, Plan F for those individuals that were on Medicare prior to January 1st of 2020. Uh, but these plans are standardized uh, across states and across carriers in the majority of the states. I think there's about three or four states that do not offer these standardized plans, but this is what you'll mainly work with when you're working with Medicare supplement plans. So since the Medicare supplement plans are standardized, where a carrier stands out in the market is with their pricing. So they will have different pricing based on gender, male or female, tobacco, non-tobacco, area rating, rural versus metropolitan, uh, looking at discounts. Is there a household discount? What's the percentage? What are the rules around that household discount? Also risk. Is there a build chart? So those are ways in which carriers, again, can stand out in the industry uh, of how they price their Medicare supplement product. And there's a lot that goes into it. Also, keep in mind that there's rate adjustments with Medicare supplement plans that happen on an annual basis. This will keep pace with the rising Medicare claim trend, as well as changes in the annual deductibles and co-pays. So it is very common that Medicare supplement plans have a annual rate adjustment. With Medicare supplements, there are really three different ways that one can enroll, three different types of scenarios. So just to break it down, keep it high level, open enrollment is really centered around when you're turning 65, uh, first getting into Medicare, you'll have an open enrollment window where there's no underwriting. There's also guarantee issue, which that's more centered around if you're losing a group coverage or if you're losing um, your Medicare Advantage plan or dropping your Medicare Advantage plan. There are certain rules and criteria around guarantee issue. But again, if you meet that, if you fall into guarantee issue, then there's no underwriting. Now you may have a client that has been on a Medicare supplement plan for a number of years and they want to switch to a new carrier, maybe save some premium. Uh, they are in their early 70s, just to give an example, so they would not fall into an open enrollment or guarantee issue. Since they're switching from one Medicare supplement plan to another, they would need to go through the underwriting process. That underwriting process consists of health questions on the application, they will do a pharmaceutical screen, and then they may do random health phone interviews based on the data that they've collected. So we can talk to you in more depth and give you more assistance with these different enrollment scenarios if need be. So that hopefully gave you a good understanding of all the different components that make up Medicare. We can definitely help you with further questions uh, pertaining to Medicare. Contact us at seniorhealth.jeter.com or at 800-228-0008. We've been serving producers since 1979 in all lines of business that are listed there on the left-hand side. We have an underwriter on staff. We have case managers, new business and market specialists. Uh, we offer incentives, training, uh, free leads, free E&O, top commissions, top with the top carriers, uh, free email encryption tool, and of course, a lot of the companies now have e-apps and we can help assist with that. So we are here to help you in all these lines of business and we appreciate 
of your business. And we look forward to a great 2022. Thank you.